Good evening. Hello. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. It's Thursday. Just uh, settling in for the evening. Uh, very interestingly, before I came downstairs, uh, my cat was meowing at the door. So we went to go see what was there, and there was a possum and a black cat. And I don't know, they were kind of touching each other, not arguing, I don't know, it was kind of weird actually to watch them. So I wanted to take a video, and when I put on my video, a flash went on and scared them both, and kind of separated them. And then they kind of came back together, so we were just out there watching them. Um, I, I don't know, now they're just kind of going on their own ways. But very interesting, it's only what, 8.30, it's pitch dark out already. Welcome to fall, it is what it is, right? I mean, you know, a few months ago it was still bright out. and. Oh, just make the best of it, right? It's, uh, I love fall. I love the fall leaves, and I, I'm sure a lot of us do. I just, um, I think summer was just a bit too short for me, and, and I'm just, you know, realizing we're, we're going to the new season, and there's nothing I can do about it, so I'm just going to enjoy it for what it is, and then that's all right. So, interestingly, um, I sent out an email the other day, that reminded me of something that I do every day, but I forgot the process of what it was many years ago when I was told to do it. It was called the mirror, the mirror challenge. I'm not sure if any of you read it, read it um, on the email or tried it even, but I just want to explain it quickly um, to see if anyone's interested in doing this challenge. And, and if you want to do the challenge, you can actually email me or text me and say, I'm going to do it. Um, because the only reason I actually completed that challenge, I think it was 14 years ago, before I got into any of this, I went to some reader, it was a, I'm going to call her an angel reader. Um, if, if she was still alive, I would give everyone her number. She was a beautiful woman and her uh, apartment was completely pink. And I don't know what made me go to her. Um, can't remember. I just knew I was very unhappy in my life and someone suggested I go talk with her. And when I went into her apartment for, she was going to read some past life stuff and my contracts and stuff, which made no sense to me. But when I walked into her apartment, I just felt so much love there. And I cried for 45 minutes. And she was so patient and so kind and so loving and she's like oh something told me you needed a two-hour session and um when she finally calmed me down and, and and whatnot it's just so bizarre how that just happens it's just like you're just in a comfortable space and you can let your guard down and i never cried before so it was not something i would normally do in front of someone anyway she gave me this little bit of a reading and stuff, which actually makes sense nowadays. Back then, it made no sense to me. One thing she did say, though, is before you leave my, my place, I'm going to ask you to do the mirror challenge. And she uh, looked me in the eye and she made me shake her hand and said, will you do it? So she didn't explain it first before I said, yes, I will. And because I made that agreement with her, um, and I did some had some follow up sessions with her before she passed on. Um, I did I did do that challenge, and it was the hardest thing of my life. So let me just kind of uh, explain it, and then uh, we'll go from there. So the the gist of it was that you need to look into a mirror into your own eyes. So you're looking in a mirror, looking in your eyes. And you're supposed to say something very nice to yourself for two minutes. So she wrote something. I can't remember exactly what she wrote, but it pretty well is along these lines. Uh, for two minutes, keeping eye contact with yourself, you can blink, but you can't turn away. If you cry, you know, you're turning away, you have to start over or that day didn't count. Once you can do it for two minutes where you're looking at yourself, able to say the words without looking away, that is day one. When you get to day one, you can then do it for 60 days because it forms a beautiful habit. So when I first did it, uh, it took me two to three weeks to be able to do two minutes without turning away. Um, I, I cried for, for uh, every time I tried to do it. So you look in the mirror and you say, okay, so I'm going to use it as I, I would to myself and say, Brenda, I love you so much. You deserve love. 
you are loved. I love you so much. And no matter what you've been through and whatever you've done, I will always love you. And you just, and it, what it does is you're talking to like your soul, you're talking to you. And all those things people have ever said about you or in your deep core, you have those self-esteem issues come to the surface. It is a very tough thing to do. And if I did not shake that woman's hands, I would have never continued because it was so hard. And she told me, you're going to want to quit after five seconds of doing it. But if she goes, if you keep doing it and keep doing get to two minutes, when you get to that two minutes, and two minutes seemed like forever, it seemed like for like two hours. But now what I do every morning, I look in my eyes and I say, Brenda, I love you just the way you are. I love you. You deserve me. I just talk to myself. And even if I'm having a day where I feel a little chubby or my hair's not turning out or I'm feeling more sad, I'll always do it to myself. And it feels so good just to really look in my own eyes and say, I love you. Something I could not do back then. So I always very thankful to her for that. And she always asked me, did you do it? Oh yeah. I was so accountable to her. And, um, I sometimes, when I feel there are clients that really have deep um, self-love issues, I will ask them to do the challenge. Many have actually denied it and said, no, they don't want to do it. So, um, you know what, when I was asked to do it on a call I've been attending, I'm just doing a, I'm always improving myself, let's say, so I'm working on something right now. And uh, the, one of them was, they said, hey, you know, we should do this. Everyone on the call should do this mirror challenge. I said, oh, I, I still do it today. And, and it was the toughest thing I ever did. And there was about four other people who've done that as well. And they have continued with that habit of just looking in the mirror of them, saying how much they love themselves. And uh, very interestingly, I asked my kids to look in the mirror and say, you know, I look so beautiful today or I love myself today. And, and they can do it because they started off a lot younger. But many people have a hard time looking at themselves and saying, I, I love you. Uh, there was a Louise Hayes. I read her book many years ago. Back in the day when she was starting out, she was having sessions in her house. She's passed on now. She was a lovely woman. I love her affirmations. And I'm a big affirmation queen. So uh, a lot of them, I, I used to do hers all the time. So interestingly, when she was working with, I believe back in the 80s, she was working with a lot of um, people who had AIDS and, and no one really wanted to be around these people back then because they didn't understand the disease. They kind of just kind of socially put people in a box um, and didn't want it. So she, she was doing these support groups and she writes, I don't know what book I read it in or if it was an interview, what she was having, first it started with two or three people that got bigger and bigger what she asked them to do was to grab a mirror and look at themselves in the mirror and say i love you and oh, people back then there was a lot of shame with um being uh bisexual no i guess gay yeah and uh, what she said is because they had so much shame that their bodies would not heal from their sickness. So she was working with people to look, when you look in yourselves and say, I love you. A lot of us have shame for whatever, like I'm not a good enough mom. I, you know, I, I, I did things in the past. I, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. So a lot of us have shame, guilt, and resentment towards ourselves, right? So when we're looking in the mirror and we're saying, I love you, all that comes to the surface and it feels really gross. Right? very uncomfortable <laughs> but continue with that and keep doing it because as resistance comes up it's coming up for a release and as you're saying you love yourself you're letting it go so a lot of the healing that we're doing it's not the little self Brenda that's doing it half of the stuff I don't know it's I surrender and say I don't know what I need today I don't know what I need what my next lesson needs to be let me get out of the way and show me what it is and you know, I've been doing this for so long. Sometimes I get a little bit exhausted from doing it, but I'm very stubborn at the same way. So sometimes after I go through a big learning lesson, I might say, okay, I kind of need a bit of a break and I'm going to take two weeks off. I'm not going to do anything, which never happens because within two days, I'm looking for that. I'm asking, okay, show me the next thing that I can enhance. 
or show me the next resistance or the next block or the next this that I need to let go. It does just get, it gets easier over time because that uncomfortable feeling is something that's so common or you're so used to it. That's, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to come up. I'm going to feel a little bit icky and I'll let that go. Replace it with love and light. So what we're all doing right now is going through this beautiful human evolution where we are getting rid of the duality that we have, the separation, and moving back to unity. And it's a personal ascension process, it's a collective one, and we are supported. And although we're supported, we're the ones that need to do the work. So we're the ones that are going through the uncomfortable feelings of healing. And there's a few things I've learned. It's hard to articulate them because I'm still in the learning process. And whenever I'm learning something, if I don't quite get it 100% in myself, so understand, it's hard to articulate it. So I can't explain it exactly, but I want to kind of give you a tidbit of what I realized recently. There are two ways to move through our karma, our learnings, our experiences that we need to go through. So I can go to another healer and they can help me release and it's beautiful, but what they're helping me release are the lessons, the crap that no longer serve me. If there is something that I still need to learn, I still need to go through, I am going to have to go through it. But here's the trick. You can go through it in a 3D way with lots of suffering, chaos, confusion, sadness, or you can go through it in a 5D perspective way. And, and this is where I'm having a hard time to articulate this so it makes sense to people because I just had this aha moment recently. So I'm still replaying, re-listening and learning this. Um, but my understanding is if I look back at my life and all the chaos I went through to learn lessons, apparently I may have not had to do that. Now, I don't regret that I did. I never want to repeat what I had to go through. Um, but to think that maybe I could have did it a little bit differently where I didn't have to suffer so much. And, I, you know, people say, just let things be, just, you know, go to the higher room, go to the higher floor, go to the higher vibration, get to the next level and see it from a different. And then I think, well, I don't know if I could have done that back then because of the state I was in. So maybe I did have to learn those lessons in that 3D state where it was a lot more difficult. And now that I can see things in a different perspective and get myself up into a higher vantage point, let's say, I can bring the lesson with me and have it taught to me in a way that's less painful. I don't know if that makes sense exactly. So what I'm trying to figure out, and I'm still working on the details here, is there a way that I'm gonna use myself in an example, is there a way that someone like me who's going through all these learning lessons in a very traumatic, chaotic way, could I have done something differently to still learn that lesson from this higher perspective where you're still learning the lesson, but it's not as painful. It's, it's nothing like learning it in 3D. If there is some magic key or some magic way or it's something that can be done, then I would love to teach it to those so they don't have to go through the chaos that I went through to get to where I am. Um, so I'm still learning, I'm still asking, I'm still trying to figure out and sometimes I don't articulate all the thoughts that go through my head because I'm still processing it. So if there is an easier way, I, I will definitely let you guys know. I always say there's no magic wand. We do have to personally go through our layers or traumas or experience and let them go. We are being guided by our higher self for the next learning, the next learning. Um, we're all on our own journey to get there, but we're technically already there, right? Because we're already magnificent beings that I know to be true. 
what we're doing is we're just removing the dense energy, the resistance that keeps us from shining our magnificence. So I'm trying to figure out, is there an easier way to let that stuff go so we shine and get to that true self, we get out of the way quicker. Um, that's what I'm still working on. So you can tell I do not have the answer. If I do come across it, I will definitely let you know. I'm in a big learning process right now. I crave learning and I can't stop learning, but then I'm always thinking, and now I've just gone to meditation for the answers. And when I get answers, they don't actually make sense. It's like they have to go through different levels. And then I have to process that and it comes down, it comes down, it comes down. And eventually when it's really deep in my core and I understand it, then I know it. So I'm at a kind of at that threshold of it's there, it's there, it's swirling, all that information is coming, but I haven't quite connected all the dots to say I know it. So I, I don't know it yet. I just know something big is coming and I'll figure it out. In the meantime, just be kind to yourself as you're going through these crappy feelings. And I don't think all the feelings go away because sometimes I can release things from a different vantage point. It's easier, but it's still a little bit icky, right? I mean, that's part of healing, unfortunately. One thing I do know is there's no magical bed we're going to lay on that's going to shake us and all our traumas and everything's just going to melt away. We have to see what we have created. And this is the icky part of being human, right? Because we've had thousands of years with that dark consciousness and we've done some pretty horrific things as a collective, um, possibly in past lives, things like that. And, and these are things that there's a cause and effect. That's what karma is. Anything I've done, there's this kind of, you know, you have to work through it. So. I can't just wipe out everything, say, okay, I'm done. I have to go through the process of letting it go. I learned my lesson moving forward and, and things like that as we move um, through the ascension process. The neat thing is now they're talking about the 24th chromosome, which is like a spiritual chromosome, which has all of these gifts. So we all have gifts that we might not be using so as we get lighter consciousness and more light in the 24th chromosome is starting to kick in does it kick in for everyone i would say i believe everyone has it i believe you have to do some work to want to activate it you don't have to activate it again we always have free will so there are many times in my life just like all of you i'm sure but we had choices. You can live a life of just ignoring that call that wants to wake you up and just be in that program of living life. Sometimes ignorance is bliss, right? And then once you open up this door of knowing there's more and I can grow and I can, well, you're kind of opening this never ending growth which is leading us into human evolution, which is really neat because humanity has never been in this before. So we're kind of moving in uncharted territory. I know it's good, but the ickiness we're feeling is that we have to see what we created before we used to hide things in the background, they would hide, right? That darkness hid behind everything. Now, because we're evolving, we have to see it. So as we're getting into a higher consciousness, the darkness on the planet is now revealing. It's icky, it's disgusting, it doesn't make us feel good. And then we're going through our own clearing of our own stuff, which is not comfortable. So it's kind of an uncomfortable process, but it's going to lead to a really beautiful state. I believe with every cell of my body, we are going to make it. I, I believe there's no doubt. And sometimes I listen to other people and they're like, yeah, we're most likely gonna make it. That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, Cause to me, I already know we're going to make it. The question in my mind is how long is it gonna take to get there? And you know, someone said we have to do this for the next 50 years, I would be exhausted. But because I believe it's seven years or so, I'm like, okay, I can keep doing this. 
sometimes I need a mental break and I just want to zen out and just look at a wall and not be bothered. Um, but I usually say I want to do that for a week and it lasts like about four hours and I'm back again. Some days I get really frustrated because I'm just like, oh my gosh, when is this going to end? And but we're, we all go through that. And sometimes there's a full moon. So there was a full moon recently. And for those of you who are sensitive, you may have felt like this, things come to the surface and you're like, okay, why am I feeling that? Do you ever get, and I'd love to know this because I'm just lately, I've been getting this weird feeling that I'm all alone. And it doesn't make any sense, right? Because I have kids, I have a partner, I have my mom, I have friends, but then you have this sense that you're just all alone. And where does that come from? Where does that sense of all alone come from? So then, you know, if I really think about it, was it a past life? Was it this? But I don't like to have to dig and think about it. So when that full moon came up and I was feeling very lonely, I just said, okay, whatever this feeling is, I may not understand where it's coming from. Because the little self Brenda is not always going to understand, but whatever it's coming from, I'm just releasing it and I'm allowing love and light to come and transmute it. So I don't mind using the word release, like I'm going to release something. Some people say they don't like the word, but you can use letting it go, transmuting, whatever. You're really, the universe is sensing your vibration. Your guides know the request you're asking. So I don't think it, it's, you have to be too particular on words, but there are people who, who really believe that you need to be in, and that's okay. So I always say, do what's comfortable with you you know yourself best right well your higher self knows you best obviously but you know we're taking that guidance so if someone says oh brenda you really need to try this method and i listen to it but it's not jiving with me well i don't do it because for me that's not my truth it's not going to work on me but i'll give you another example i'm working with a few people who are who have cancer and so it's very interesting because there are some people who really believe in chemo and they want chemo and then there's other people that don't want it absolutely not then there's people that are in between so i always tell people there's no right and wrong with any type of um, method you're going to do or medical treatment you're going to do what you want to do is be in residence with it like feel good about it so if you feel good about chemo then it's going to work for you then do it you can do energy work along with it it works beautifully but if you're someone who doesn't want to and you're you know your family's trying to pressure you into something that doesn't feel good to you i always say go with your heart because if you have if you're doing something that doesn't feel good it may not work for you let's say right so it's like if this method feels good for you then do it if it doesn't then don't do it so i get a lot of people giving me try this do this and and sometimes i i'm like oh it feels really good i am going to try it and it's like wow that was really different and really neat and then other times like oh, no nah, there's something but i just don't want to do it because that's just where i'm at and that's why there are so many different methods out there right now they're popping out everywhere there's always something new coming out it's because there's different practitioners out there, different methods you can do on your own. The reason that's there, it's also kind of tapping into the same thing, but we're all very unique beings. So what works for me isn't gonna necessarily work for this person and vice versa. We're all on our own healing paths. So we just have to go within, do what's, what feels right with you. And if it stops feeling right, then try something else. A lot of us will even outgrow our practitioners, our doctors, whoever, even our friends. We're just changing and growing, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? So just go with what feels good to you. And then just take a deep breath and give, put yourself into allowance. So you get into a state of allowance, because if you're going to do the work, you might as well allow it to work for you instead of putting up resistance. And usually, Whenever I'm trying something new, even if I want to try it, I will have resistance come up. And it's usually something that says, okay, don't even bother trying this, or you're always trying something new. Or, and, and really, I, I know the difference now. It's that part of me, that resistance that doesn't want to go, that next layer is trying to talk me out of it. So I usually can get a sense like, okay, or don't listen to this uh, podcast. You know, I get that feeling. 
oh, you already know it. No, that's when I need to listen the most is when I'm having that resistance not to listen because someone's going to explain something in a way that helps me understand it. Say if I'm stuck on like right now, I'm, I'm not stuck, I'm processing something, right? But perhaps the answer is going to come in from a totally different avenue. And if that answer is going to come to me from something that's completely different, the resistance inside me that doesn't want me to find the answer is going to say, don't listen to that person, they're full of crap. And then that's, I have the awareness to say, oh, that means that person most likely knows what they're talking about or it's something I need to listen to. So then I'll get out of the way as best as I can. So a little Brenda, get out of the way and I'll breathe, I'll do whatever I need to get out of the way. And I'll say, okay, I'm going to listen with an open heart and open mind and just listen and see what I get from it. So with no judgment. Um, now I don't have to obviously take their advice, let's say, or take the information, but I do want to listen to it and see and say, ah, and usually that's the case like, ah, that's what I was waiting for. The universe talks to me in very different ways because I'm, I'm not going to say I'm stubborn. I used to be very stubborn. I'm less stubborn nowadays. So, you know, before I would need 10 people to tell me the same thing in different ways before like, oh, so-and-so just said this and it clicked. And then those nine people that told me that same thing in different ways, get mad at me. I told you the same thing six months ago. Yeah, I get it. I just need to hear it. And that's because each person that was talking to me was breaking a little bit of my resistance. And then the other person, now that 10th person that told me the same thing in a different way, all that other resistance was pulled away from those nine people. Now I'm able to hear it. So the, um, I would always say the thanks goes to those 10 people that helped me break that resistance. Uh, that's one thing that I find if we have a breakthrough with a client and like, oh, Brenda, look what you did. No, it wasn't me. I just was the lucky person that happened to be that person who you were able to listen to or that broke through that last bit of resistance because all that other work you did before meeting me brought you to that point. So another example is we all have, we have a jar that's stuck. And we're passing it around everyone's trying to open it no one's that last person that opened it that person didn't open the jar by themselves it was a collective effort from everyone who tried right they just happened to be that lucky person who opened the jar so um anytime someone heals or has a breaking point it is the person who's doing it that's the person who really should be honored because they allowed for the healing they allowed for that resistance to break free so really when we're doing even a session like this and people have these beautiful breakthroughs, well, yeah, we're doing this together. Yes, we're creating a healing space. We're all in this, so our energy's flowing, it's making it stronger. So it's you guys, as you're healing yourself, your higher self is taking what it needs. So if you have a breakthrough of that, um, the congratulations goes to you, but we're also blessed to be a part of it because we're kind of co-creating right so it's really neat um it's humbling right and there's a lot going on this planet so when we can get together in a group like this and and share the love we're all going to get what we can today so we want to get into that receiving mode and how do you get into the receiving mode well, just ask because you know we don't know what kind of resistance is there trying to push things away just say to your guides or you, whoever you believe in, God, the source, you say, listen, I'm here. I'm going to take whatever I can to heal physically, mentally, and emotionally. And let's go as hard as I can possibly go. I'm ready. And that's you asking. And when you ask and you're giving permission, they usually give you a pretty decent release. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. Some people are hoping for big shifts but and they don't may not feel a big shift but there's so much happening in the quantum field that you don't understand that you're probably having a bigger shift than you know and generally i can tell when i've gone through a big shift because i'm a little more irritable after sometimes i have a rash and i'm just like you know this sucks but then over time i level out and like whoa i feel so different so be kind to yourself along your healing journey 
sometimes we're going to have ups and downs and sometimes as we go into healing things get worse initially and like why did i even start this well you're starting it because it's starting a beautiful journey to healing and you know if you look back what was i like two months ago what was i like six months ago what was i like a year ago and your history doesn't define who you are every time you wake up and make the choice to be better that defines what you are so you just kind of wake up and do your best and and just keep crawling forward some some people can run i'm more of a person who crawls very like i'm in mud sometimes it's really frustrating but that's just who i am so now i've accepted it you know my journey has been long it's been exhausting and I'm still going at it and, and it's okay, you know, uh, there's a little bit of frustration, but then I know what it feels like to be on the opposite end when people are frustrated saying this isn't going fast enough. Okay, so with that being said it's nine o'clock so let's start the healing what we're going to do is once we start we're all going to start throwing in our energy it's going to make this beautiful thing and then we're all going to go into receiving mode, we are also going to send out this beautiful energy to. The entire world and what we can do is you can just visualize the energy wrapping around mother earth and the neat thing is this energy will go to everyone on earth and it's up to their higher self to take it or not we can't force it we always put the intention that anyone in your household will get a healing again if their higher self accepts it pets they usually eat this stuff up so um we'll we'll ask uh, that the energy goes to our pets We'll do a clearing of our house, which usually happens pretty easily. Um, so you'll notice that your house will feel lighter. People in your house will feel lighter. They might fall asleep easier tonight. If you have young children, generally, they usually have more of a peaceful sleep um, and they don't wake up. I always find when my daughter, she usually watches this in her room. Um, she used to be in the tent back in the day, but now she's in her room listening. And this is the one night where she will sleep so peacefully. It's so cute when I go check her, check on her. She's just in this little cute position. She's sleeping so peacefully and she ends up sleeping in where that's the morning I have to wake her up after a session like this. Usually she's waking me up. So it's really neat how we all can uh, react from this. Some of us will have a peaceful sleep. Some of us will be more irritated, maybe burping or letting out gas or have a very busy subconscious mind. That's when you can ask your guides, hey, listen, I know I'm going through something, but please make it easier on me. And they usually will listen, although some people say it's not working. So um, we're all different. Drink lots of water and uh, use affirmations. Affirmations are very powerful. I'm healing. I'm feeling better every day. I'm going to have a peaceful sleep. We're going to allow this to really transform me because if i'm in alignment and my my everything's in alignment and i'm in a higher vibration i'm working on myself my world starts to change around me so i can get out of chaos and start learning lessons from the higher room instead of from the 3d self so yeah that's a nice intention so let's do that let's learn our lessons in the higher octave and not in 3d because 3D learning is pretty hard. Okay, everyone. And uh, I have, uh, well, I think we all have had a lot of uh, experience in 3D learning. All right. So music's coming on. I'm going to share it. If you like the music, right? If you don't, just turn off the music. You don't have to listen to it. Once I'm done, I'm going to bring the bowl and just send out a clearing of the last bit of energy. Here we go. I'm just going to share music and we'll begin.
Five minutes over the energy wasn't stopping so finally it settled down all right everyone um i'll stay on for any questions i won't start talking because i always say right but i'm going to try not to um that was lovely very intense so thank you for joining me with that that was a nice collection of everyone's energy beautiful Whew. I think I conked out for a part of it too, to be quite honest. Sometimes I don't know where I am. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm doing a call. I come back. 
<laughs> That's funny. I'm just gonna drink some more here. All right, I think everyone's good. Again, just drink lots of water and and get the best sleep you possibly can and don't be upset if you're not sleeping that's just part of processing and that's all okay as well <sighs> yeah if you do these uh regularly less accumulate you're getting smaller layers but if you don't do them often you get a bigger layer sometimes so sometimes that i feel that too when I haven't done something, I feel like a big thing left. Or sometimes, sometimes, maybe it's just something big that had to leave, so. Mm. All right. All right, everyone. Well, you know, I, uh, I'm still buzzing, actually. Wow. There, I, I know I, I may have mentioned this on a call, but it was with a client that at first came in. There's a, a new energy that's been coming in. I'm gonna call it a light beam, um, but it's new. It's very strong and my body can't really handle it. It's getting better with it. Sometimes if you feel like I can't breathe, that's in my whole body shaking. I almost wanna like walk around when I'm, whew, I can still feel it. It's, it's a bit much. <laughs> ah, we have lots of help uh, coming. Oh yeah, the mirror, try the mirror work. Seriously, it's one of the best things everyone, anyone's ever uh, made me do. It's uh, not easy, but just go with it because resistance just flies off, you know? And you heal at physical, mental, emotional with that. It really starts the healing journey. It's very, very powerful. Actually, anyone who's trying the mirror um, thing, if they've never tried it before, I would love to hear how your reaction was. I mean, intense or not intense, I'm just curious, because we're all very different. Okay, I'm going to end the call. I'm going to drink lots of water, have a good sleep. And uh, thanks for everyone for joining. That was a lot of fun. The, the replay will go up and uh, it's there and you can always rewatch it. And the healing session will work again for the next layer. So it doesn't have time or space. It's really cool how that really works. All right, everyone. Good night. Sleep well. And uh, we'll chat soon. Take care. Bye-bye.